I never thought I'd have an episode where I'd be considering getting a license to a Ogden Edsel classic, Dead Puppies Aren't Much Fun. Blah. How many? John Wick just killed eight more of my men. Here's some advice. Whatever you do, do not cross John Wick. Do not touch his dog. Do not steal his car. Do not borrow his phone charger. This man takes revenge seriously. And he's just getting started. Do not cross John Wick. Little Hand says it's time to rock and roll. Bring the noise. And thank you for coming back to 90 for Chill, the podcast. This is your host, Cool Movies Darth, is the handle that I'm trying to get over. If you want to know what I'm watching, go to letterbox.com slash cmdarth. Otherwise, just call me Russ Stevens, and the Twitter that I tend to use most is at CatBusRuss, which is kind of ironic that I'm doing a podcast about dogs this week. Actually, I was supposed to interview the host of the Tattoo Squid podcast. It's an excellent character study in people who just like to focus on their nerdum, be it horror movies. He had a medium on the prior week. Good conversation to be heard. I tried to go and pull off some letterbox stocking on my big sister, the poetic critic. That's the poetic critic on Litterbox. I think I may have said Litterbox there. It just didn't really get... I think a lot of potency in the conversation or it just gets redundant after having her on the previous week. There's some good stuff there and I might use that as a bonus episode uh, to drop. I guess it just wasn't what I did to try, watch to prepare for it, to try to get her opinions upon. She wasn't quite as passionate about. Um, She's not really an action movie person and the film that I saw that drew my eye, which qualifies for 90 for Chill, the podcast rules being 75 to 99 minutes long, was Mad Max 2 The Road Warrior. And I ran a bunch of just ideas of pastor. Nothing was really hitting. I did bring up the fact that, you know, a lot of good movies kill the dog. Spoiler alert, and The Road Warrior the only canine in the future just gets shot mercy mercy eh, without mercy you take away the you finally bring a human attachment to the character which is what killing the dog is supposed to do i suppose i mean it's worked since walt disney had old yeller put down you look at movies like reanimator which was a cat that gets killed in Reanimator, but in the sequel, they uh, spread it around, and it just shows you that, you know, it's not Student Gordon's film, but we're gonna go in mess with your brain as best as Brian Usna can, who's, you know, got some good production credits. He did produce the first uh, Reanimator. Beneath Still Waters was the only movie that comes to immediate mind that I've seen of his which had a lot of potential, but it really comes across as like a Charles Band movie. Other thoughts about dead dogs, you get John Wayne, and like Mad Max, the dog doesn't have a name, it's just dog. I think a part of us is always fearing or we're always pulling for the dog. He's man's best friend. He's the one person that should get out of it. But could you imagine how much better how much more emotion we could get out of Independence Day. It may not be the riffable movie that it is now if that dog would have just been consumed by that fireball. Or maybe I'm living with cats way too much and I'm just like, yeah. I mean, we don't talk about roasted cats much, but hey, it's a delicacy in Eastern Asia. At least to the point where it was a concern of the World Cup back in 2002 in Seoul about 
really are we going to let tourists come and question the menu? You know, I'm thinking about movies where Kill a Dog may have made it better, you know. I couldn't really get behind Alex in Flashdance. She's very selfish about her getting a break. And she still maintained that selfish attitude after her mentor dies. You know, by that point, let's knock some sense into her. Let's kill the dog. You know, we have to kill the ant in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Maybe Stuart Gordon has an affinity for dogs. I haven't seen one die in one of his movies yet. Not cool with the cats. Definitely not cool with the cats. So Castle Freak is another one where the cat gets to show, oh yeah, there's real trouble here. But cats, at least, they tend to get their vengeance. I mean, that's what Sleepwalkers, the Stephen King movie best-selling point, I guess, is the cats are suspecting or trying to stop these vampire type creatures I mean the best selling point is you know seeing a ear of corn shoved into a police officer's back (laughs) as a fatality you just don't get that kind of craziness in Stephen King best thing you get is maximum overdrive and yeah it doesn't really so I'm not really speaking too highly of sleepwalkers when I stop and think about it just because, but Hey, Cujo gets it. As far as I know, <laughs> it's difficult for me dealing with movies with animals that are vicious, I suppose. Cause you know, people, those are pretty easy to predict an animal. They only have two modes. And if you guess wrong, your dog meat, <laughs> Now, no, it's not going to work for all movies. I was just uh, transcribing a review for the movie Teenagers from Out of Sp- Outer Space from 1959, a movie that Warner Brothers let go into the public domain. It's a good thing that I pretty much wrote that review at that time, because when I saw it as the second half of a drunken zombie double feature, I was way too plastered to remember it without it being documented but you know they kill a dog off the bat doesn't help that movie i mean that movie can't be helped i suppose i mean giant lobsters still so painful that i had to drink to forget it i believe it was on mystery science theater 3000 i guess i gotta go and conclude this if we're going for the youtube algorithm and let me just bring up Another Will Smith movie. I have not seen I Am Legend, but we all know about the dog pretty much being the only humanity left in the Will Smith character. You know what? If that doesn't happen, that death doesn't happen, you don't have a third act. I don't like to say John Wayne set a good example, but when in doubt, kill the dog. So, as I say, I'm just rambling on this episode, and it's going to be tough to try getting guests to come back after this one, especially since, you know, suggesting dog death is definitely going to offend probably Jessica Quaz from Second Chance Movies. It's probably going to, well, Allie from Allie's Accessory Shop on Etsy, she's knows my sense of humor well enough that she'll let it slide. Next week, I'm looking for a guest. So if you want to be on the show, just uh, shoot me an email. The address is rustthebus07 at gmail.com. That's R-U-S-S-T-H-E-B-U-S-0-7 at gmail.com. Or again, you can follow me on Twitter. That is at catbusrust. That's at C-A-T-B-U-S-R-U-S-S. Send me a DM if you don't like the podcast. And I can imagine there will probably be some people who don't like this one. I prefer to get all my hate sent there. Otherwise, if you want to help me out, give me those subscriptions and five-star reviews. So, as it goes for getting on the show, just got to come up with a theme, a movie, a director, or an actor. Focus on sub-100-minute material, and we'll create some podcast gold. Thanks again for coming to the 90 for Chill, the podcast. Have yourselves a good day, good week. And uh, hug those little fur balls. Can I hear a wahoo?